Hello friends, my name's James. And this is my 1965 Alberg 30 Sloop SV Tritea. We're on a mission to sail around the world and see as much of this beautiful planet as possible. On this season, we're working our way through New Zealand. I want to share with you all the magic that is Aotearoa. I arrived to New Zealand from Fiji without a working engine. A good Samaritan towed me to the quarantine dock to clear into customs, and then marina employees towed me into a slip as the storm built. Now it was time to figure out what was happening with the engine. Okay, we're here in Opua, Bay of Islands, New Zealand, and i um, been here about um, less than a week, and I have a mechanic from JMB Marine, here in Apua, coming down to test the compression on the engine. I got a replacement starter, so a brand new starter, cost me 320 US dollars, factory replacement. They ordered it for me too. This guy James owns that company or runs it. Good dude. And um, he's sending it down, one of his dudes right now. Test the compression. What I'm worried about is that one of the rings are bad, so I'm gonna, we're going to have to pull the engine and replace the rings or the pistons or who knows what. Um, and we are like, I don't even know, week and a half from Christmas holiday. And in New Zealand, everything shuts down for a month. So, I don't have much, <laughs> much hope of getting this taken care of before the Christmas holiday or before January like 13th or whatever. <clears throat> but we'll know more today. That's when we're getting the compression tested by a professional. And then I will get their sort of opinion about how to move forward with this nightmare of an unreliable engine. Basically, just give her a few wheels over. Okay, if you, there's a button right here. You want me to push it? Oh, yeah. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's quite low, but you're sort of expecting it to be up in the 300s. Well, so it's like half of what it should be? Yeah, well, a hundred, about 100 short. It's probably 380 in the factory manual. And uh, what's it reading? Let me see. What's it say on there now? 220. It's just that button in there, yeah. eh? Mm -hmm. Mm. There we go. Well, that's what I was just suspecting. That's what I need to know. I guess I'll talk to James about <laughs> how we move forward. I mean, my guess is I have to pull the engine, right? And then... Well, did, yeah. Yeah, for what? For the extent you go to, there's mm -hmm. probably no point in mucking around with it in there. Right. Well, it's good to know that what I was worried was the problem was the problem because yeah. i'd kind of gone through everything yeah i bled yeah. it a hundred times that was the weird thing which maybe it's the, you know when she gets started she runs like a champ yeah once it's going because it's got the heat and everything there. and there's there's no glow plugs on this engine either yeah, yeah i even tried pouring hot water from the kettle over it to try yeah. to warm it up i tried all the old school tricks and yeah 
All right. Okay, so Barry just left from J and B, and I have no compression on my engine. The aft piston had like was like a hundred psi shy of the right compression. It had 220, and uh, the forward piston had like a hundred, and he said it should have been like 320 from the factory. So, which is, it actually makes me relax quite a bit because it's ex it's what I thought was the problem. So, knowing that I was able to diagnose it after going through everything, that that makes me feel good to have the peace of mind that I knew that I did everything else I could. Um, so, that means the engine has to come out. Barry said, he's like, you probably could do it right here, but it would be a real nightmare. Um... I could for sure take these pistons out and put the new ones in with the rings. They're sleeves, he said, too. Um, and at, like, the sort of worst-case scenario, I will do it myself. I'll do it in the cockpit. I'll go, I'm going to pull the engine out no matter what. If I did it, I would do it in the cockpit. Um, but I'd much rather have them do it if I can afford it. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to go talk to James who I've already spoken to, he's a good dude, and see what a ballpark is on getting the pistons and the rings and the sleeves replaced. And the timeline. The timeline's a big issue because the Christmas holiday's coming up. The other big issue is that I can't find insurance for New Zealand to be in a marina. That you need $5 million Kiwi to be in a marina. And I have contacted four different places that won't cover me. Either because my boat's too old and not worth enough to them, or because I'm a U.S. flag vessel. My insurance in the U.S. is through Progressive. They don't go that high. So that means I have to go out under anchor, which is fine, but with no motor and with the motor out and stuff, kind of in a pickle. Um, so I got to figure that out as well. I put a call out yesterday on Instagram and I got like a, a number of different people sent me contacts. So I have like maybe six more contacts to work through to try to find insurance to cover me in New Zealand. Cause that would be a bummer to not be able to stay in a marina ever. I normally stand or anchor, but it'd be, it's nice to just like relax and be step off the boat and walk and get coffee sometimes. Especially when you don't have an engine. <laughs> so, figure it out. Um, tomorrow morning, I'll know more about the cost. So, seawater definitely got into my engine. And that would explain the whole business. Um, so, it's toasted. Uh, as far as, like, the rings and everything goes. We'll see what condition the pistons are in. But JMB asked me to pull the head off um, to save me a lot of money uh, if I did the teardown. So I've taken the head into them so they can check the valves. He was like, I want to make sure it's not the, the valves before we go full throttle on pulling the rest of the engine out. But now looking at this, I know the whole engine's got to come out. So I'll go ahead and take that into them and have a conversation and see where we go from here. Okay, so... Um, I'm to the point where I'm pulling the block out. Everything is unhooked. And um, I borrowed a come along, which is like a chain fall hand winch from the mechanic. I tried to go buy one. I couldn't find any for sale. Uh, I'm about to set up a, I got some timber so I can make a little gantry over the companionway. And I'm going to crank her up and get her flying and try to get her into the cockpit so we can get her on a 401 dolly on the dock get her to the shop. I'm not filming this whole process like a regular how-to because I'm, one, I'm in chaos mode, and two, I don't think there's any educational value in showing this sort of chaotic stagger step process that's happening. Um, basically, all it comes down to is the shop is rebuilding it, and um, it may or may not work. They have to get the head in there to see how bad the these uh, two GM20Fs don't have sleeves for the cylinders. So 
we might have to bore it out and oversize the pistons. I don't know what that's going to cost. So everything is kind of a wild card. The guys at JMB are awesome though, have been really cool um, and working with me and trying to help me out as much as possible. So I got to get this thing out into the cockpit. Once I succeed with that, then um, I'll go get a four wheel dolly from their shop, which is just up the top of the ramp, fly it over with the boom, um, onto the dock and uh, get it up to their shop. Okay, we're getting ready to push off the dock here at Opua um, with the dinghy on the hip. There's no engine in the boat. Um, I don't want to pay $37 a day to be on a slip that's too big for Tritea. Um, I'll run out of money real quick if I do that. So we're going to use the dinghy as our little auxiliary motor on the hip and drive us out to the anchorage. It's a short little hop. My dear friends Ian and Laura are coming over to kind of keep eyeballs on me <laughs> with their dinghy. So that'll be a nice change for me to have somebody else kind of watching my back. Um, I only really need it inside this tight little marina area. Once I get the momentum going, then she drives fine with the dinghy, but it'll be a little exciting and it'll be a good insurance policy to have them keeping, keeping an eye on me. So, uh, let's get it going. All anchored. <laughs> we are anchored in two feet of water under the keel, which is hilarious. Um, I dropped the anchor and instantly, you know, thud. <laughs> and uh, I paid out like just over 20 feet, so 10 scope, which is hilarious. But the tide's gonna go up to, I think it's at below, it's almost three feet below sea level right now. It's gonna go up to over seven feet above sea level so this scope will be adequate in the full tidal range um, it's also a mud bottom so even if we touch bottom it's not an issue um, thank you Ian and Laura for helping me out they kept me off a pole in another boat uh, when I first got started out pulling out of the slip and uh, very grateful for you guys I love y'all and I'm happy to be under anchor out here just off the marina so it's an easy hop over to the dinghy dock and um, the delicious lunch which i'm gonna go find now if you enjoy the content on this channel and would like to contribute you can consider joining the patreon crew thanks for watching fair winds until next time